Welcome to Tech with Todd. Today we're going to talk about masks. This is one of the most important pieces of gear in any dive kit. I would actually say that it is the most important piece of gear. And generally, an excellent mask will serve you forever. We're gonna to talk today about what to look for in a mask, how masks work, why masks work, and some of the strengths and minuses of various types of masks. First, we're gonna talk about why we need a mask at all. And the reason is called refraction. The way light bends, our eyes have been tuned by biology and nature to see light focused through air. So when we enter the water, our eyes just can't focus because the light bends and moves at a different speed because of its change in index of refraction. So in order for our eyes to work in water where the index of refraction is different than it is in air and the light bends differently, what we need to do is create a space between our eyes and the water like this and voila, now we can see focused underwater and that will add immensely and is the reason that we can enjoy an underwater experience. Now, what you should look for in a mask is one that fits properly. And it's very simple to tell when a mask actually fits properly. What I like to do is pull the strap over the front because you don't need the strap for a proper fitting mask. What the strap does is it keeps it from being kicked off your head. But if a mask fits properly, all you have to do is put it on your face, suck in just slightly with your nose and voila, it will stay in your face, even if you're shaking it. And to take the mask off, a little air through the, through the nose, a change in pressure, push it right off your face. But that little suck in, and that's a proper fitting mask. And before you purchase a mask, I suggest you do the same. Many people have different shapes and sizes of faces, and you wanna find the right mask that'll help you. There is nothing worse than a leaky mask underwater. It will distract you the whole time. So invest in a proper fitting quality mask. So the difference between masks and goggles comes down to this part of the mask. You'll see some goggles today have uh, actually have a full pane of glass up front, but they don't have a nose piece. And that's what actually what limits them to swimming in relatively shallow water. By enveloping the nose, what it allows you to do is correct for pressure as you descend. So as you're scuba diving, the pressure of the water is going to push that mask against your face harder and harder. That's called a mask squeeze. Now there's a simple solution. If you exhale just slightly through your nose, that additional air is gonna balance out the pressure from the water and prevent that mask squeeze. You should never feel your mask crushing into your face. Breathe out through your nose and correct the offset of that pressure. <coughs> and that's also why free divers prefer a different style of mask. They prefer a lower volume, lower profile mask like this. This is my backup mask, but I also use it for free diving. This is not necessarily an ideal free diving mask because it's larger. Because of the increased volume, it makes it more difficult or requires more of that breathable air that a free diver needs to stay down deeper and longer. More of that air goes into the mask and the equalization. So if they get something that's really low profile, they can minimize that air element that they need to put back in to offset the pressure. Therefore, they can actually dive deeper and longer the smaller the profile of the mask. So a common problem that people have with masks is uh, fogging. And the reason it fogs is actually relatively simple. You have the cold water on the outside hitting the glass, and in the inside you tend to have warmer air. That difference in pressure is gonna cause the air inside the mask to condense and start fogging the mask and fogging the inside of the mask. There are some relatively simple solutions to avoid this. What you ideally want to do is change the surface tension of the water so that it can't form on the lens. Now, in a car, you can solve the fogging problem by he a heating element. You can heat up the air in the car and that dries it out. There's no such mask that does that and that would be a little too technologically complex to be practical inside of a mask. However, uh, something lower cost and just as effective is to Spin in it. Now, if you spin in it and you, you rub all that around the lens, that's going to change the surface tension of the glass and not allow fog to develop. Now, from here, I would rinse this just very lightly, uh, not enough to wash it all off, but certainly enough that it's not really visible to my eye. That thin film will keep the condensation at bay by changing the surface tension of the glass. The other ways that I do this is to use a little bit of toothpaste. Toothpaste works very well. The US Navy actually studied this particular problem to find the most effective way to defog your mask. And what they discovered 
was that baby shampoo was the most effective way after trying many, many different types of items. That it lasted the longest, was relatively inexpensive and readily available. So you put a little baby shampoo in there, run it around, rinse it out, keep the fog at bay. Very important, don't forget to do it because a foggy mask can ruin your dive. The difference between an expensive mask and a cheap mask largely comes down to the materials with which they're made. But a cheap mask, and we found this actually in the river, but it's an excellent example. The plastic is kind of hard. The lens isn't glass, let alone tempered glass. It's just plastic. That means it's gonna scratch very easily. And you can feel immediately that this, this feels more like a plastic toy than a nice soft silicon. An expensive mask will have a nice tempered glass, but most importantly, this, this very soft outer skirt is what one of the large features that you're paying for and separates a real scuba diving mask from a toy mask. Um, and masks tend to last forever. Um, I have masks that are 30 years old now, strangely, um, and they still work fine. So do invest in a quality mask because taken care of, it's going to last a long time for you and is well worth the investment. You can take it everywhere and enjoy the water anywhere. So when looking at masks, there's a few key features. We talked a little bit about the volume of the mask, how important the volume is, especially to people like free divers. But also in this case, this is my backup mask. I want a small, tight backup mask so I can fit it easily in a pocket as a second mask. The independent lenses of this mask also allow for prescription lenses. In this case, they have gate, what are called gauge readers. They have small magnifying lenses at the bottom of this particular set of lenses. And because these are independent lenses in, in this style of mask, I could actually put prescription lenses into each one and then have a mask that is truly built and customized for me. This way, if I forget my contacts, I'm still able to, to dive that day. In contrast, you have the full faceplate mask where you have a single pane of glass that runs across the entire mask. This is probably the most common style today. The advantages here are that they can increase both that horizontal field of view and that vertical angle of view. And that's a key feature of masks. With a small volume mask, you get a lot more of the tunneling effect and the split lens effect. A lot of people find that claustrophobic. There's a few ways to sort of mitigate that. One is to go to the full plated glass model and also a white silicone mask will allow more light into the face and get rid of some of that claustrophobic type feeling for those who feel that. The white silicon, by allowing more light, is also a great option for people who are being photographed. For the models, it allows more light onto the face so they can more readily see the person and identify who they are. You can see their eyes better. Whereas a darker mask constricts that light, which is great if you're doing underwater photography because it allows you to see your monitor better. It does give a little more of the tunneling effect. The other downside of the white silicon mask is that the white silicone may age over time and it gets a yellow tint. Whatever features you're looking for in a mask, your local dive shop will be able to help and guide you through the process. That's all I got today. Thanks for coming to Tech with Todd. Subscribe below.